Circus Harmony is an incredible nonprofit social circus organization that uses circus arts to promote social change. In non-COVID times, you can watch them training or performing in their glass ring in the super dope City Museum in St. Louis. And in this little glass ring, they produce amazingly talented artists that go on to world-renowned circus schools like Ecole Nationale de Cirque and companies like Cirque du Soleil. So me, being the nosy person that I am, wanted to know how they produce such amazing artists, how they continue to perform during this pandemic, and how to even create and maintain a social circus in America because that's really hard. <laughs> so I interviewed the legend and the founder of Circus Harmony, Jessica Hentoff, who is also a founding member of both the Big Apple Circus and Circus Flora. And after speaking with her, it's so apparent to me that Jessica has a heart of gold because even though she is the mastermind behind her amazing program, she gives all the credit to her teaching artists and her hardworking students. And if you're new here, I'm Noelle, and I dropped out of physical therapy school to become a circus performer. So if you wanna see more circus-related content, please subscribe and ring that bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. So first off, here's a little overview about what Circus Harmony is about. So we just became a pre-professional school, a recreational school, but we are always, Circus Harmony is first and foremost, a social circus school. We use the teaching and performing of circus art to motivate social change by building character in individuals and building bridges between communities. When it's not a pandemic, we teach over 1,200 kids a year. You know, not all at one time, and some of those kids are just for one lesson, and some come all the time, and some are St. Louis Arches, and they come, you know, three to six days a week and put in a lot of hours. We're not meant to be a pre-professional school, Circus Harmony. If that's the path you want, we will help you, and we have a pretty good track record, and we will even help you get the money to pay for it. But the, the main thing is for you to be a better human, so you go out in the world and make the world a better place. We show it doesn't matter your race, your religion, your socioeconomic background, what neighborhood you go to, what school you go to, what do your parents do if you even have parents? What matters is what do you bring to the ring? And when you focus on what connects you instead of what divides you, you can create something amazing. Please tell the politicians. And I wanted to know how she produced such amazing performers. We're in a museum, even when we are practicing, people are looking in from outside. We do, when there's not a pandemic, uh, last year we did 741 shows because we're based inside this phenomenal museum, City Museum, citymuseum.org, look it up, there's nothing like it anywhere in the world. But we have a little ring, we call it our little glass tent because it's half encased in glass and half as bleachers. And we do shows there, both our students and our teachers. Most of them are mini shows, like a half hour show. As you're wandering around the museum, you come in, you watch the show. Once a year, we do a full-length show with a storyline. We have a music director. Music is written for it because we want our students to learn how to speak that language to ask for what they want for accompaniment. But this year, starting March 16th, we shut the ring down because it's small and we, yeah, it's a pandemic. And they created a really special show during the pandemic that is coming out for free on October 10th. But remember to still donate. And I got all the details on what this show is about. We have created a new show called The Balancing Act. In any case, Circus Harmony had been planning to do a show on mental health. As a circus educator, as just as an educator, I have seen since I started teaching over 40 years ago, an increased level of depression and anxiety and stress in young people. So we were planning to do a show on mental health in August. So we started work on the mental health show, but from the viewpoint of the pandemic, how are you keeping balanced in this unbalanced time? And different people were struggling with it in different ways, and everybody's situation was so different. You have three brothers, they're together, they can work together. But you have one girl who, because our students come from all over St. Louis, she's so far south, she never got to see anybody. You have kids who are way out west, and you have kids who have 
really huge houses and a lot of amenities in their houses and kids that don't even have a computer unless mom comes home from work with the smartphone. So we started to create and have created this phenomenal, to me, show. It's a show unlike any we've ever done before because it's a time unlike any we've ever been in before. And while we have done shows with a storyline, we have never done shows that are this personal. So we've created this show and we have music written for the show, but a lot of it is is narrative. It's still circus and there are some great acts, but they're being presented from people's bedrooms and living rooms and backyards. So the show is, the balancing act is a really interesting show because some of it is act, like one act on the screen, and some of it, like the juggling act, are nine boxes. Like you're in a Zoom meeting, but you're juggling together. It's really a cool and interesting show. It is going to be online October 10th, and it is free, 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 but you have to register. So people can register at circusharmony.org. They can also read more about the show. So. Our kids, for the Balancing Act show, they are allowed to say whatever they wanted to say. We have a nine-year-old girl talking about watching TV. She said, every time I turn on the TV, there's another black person getting killed by the police. Well, this is very stressful for me because half my family is black, and that means I'm black, and I'm afraid we're going to get killed. You're taking away my childhood. A nine-year-old said that. There's a brother and sister that, because of the pandemic, they get to see each other and spend time together. The brother was actually at ENC and he came home and they said, can we wear our protest shirts when we're filming our partner acro video? I'm like, sure, Black Lives Matter, sure. No, defund the police. So the show is hopefully gonna make people think because the kids do talk about how they're keeping their balance and the alumni talk about how they're keeping their balance, you know, as they wait for, for the end of this tightrope. Because right now, Every time I think I see the, the pedestal on the other end, it keeps getting extended. But this is where we are. This is where we are keeping our balance. And something I really admire about Circus Harmony is how they're even just able to maintain running a social circus in America. If you've ever looked into running a nonprofit and creating a nonprofit in America, it is so hard. <laughs> So here are some tips on how to get funding. In America, if you have an arts organization, you almost have to be a nonprofit. I understand there are some exceptions and bravo to them. But for the most part, arts organizations get funding as nonprofits. I spend a lot of my time writing grants. And we have been very fortunate to get funded by the National Endowment for the Arts, the Missouri Arts Council, Family Foundation, and corporate sponsorship. At Circus Harmony, we're about half earned income for shows for people who can pay for classes and half is contributed income. Right now, our shows are all canceled. When we do shows at City Museum, we actually tap the hat. We lost that income. We have many less people in our classes. We're not going places. So we cut our budget back a lot. I am very proud, happy, really thankful that we've been able to keep our core teachers and pay them because our program, that's our teachers and our students, that's Circus Harmony. And we have to keep it going. I have to keep paying my teaching artists and engaging my kids so that we're here for other people. And somehow, thank you, we have managed to do that, but it is getting harder and harder. And honestly, this next question was more for me than for anybody else. I wanted to know all about the process of grant writing. And I'm sure you do too. It's telling the story. And then here's the secret to grant writing. They give you directions. They ask you very specific questions. Answer those questions. People go off on tangents like, well, I want them to know this. No, they want you to answer those questions. Make it apply to what you're trying to get them to fund, but really look at what they're asking you. And the other thing for me is always an outside eye look it over, both for silly spelling stuff, but I think I'm being clear sometimes because I know what I'm thinking, but it helps to have someone else look at it. Like the most important thing is the narrative story. A lot of cities actually have a library, a grant library, where you can look things up. Start locally first. We have the Missouri Arts Council, the Regional Arts Commission, Arts and Education Council. You can look up funding for the arts, but as a social circus, we've also gotten funding from the Missouri Humanities Foundation and from a lot of organizations that primarily fund more social causes. We're very much a hybrid because we're arts education and youth development. 
both combined. Yes, there's National Endowment for the Arts, and there's a lot of work being done to help them recognize circus in a clearer way, but you'd want to start local more. And then there's tons of these small family foundations. I have a friend who just happened to be in the post office talking to someone, found out about a family foundation that they were part of, and they got thousands of dollars. So yes, if anybody also has any uh, foundations that we should apply to, write to us. The other thing that, that if you're going to have a nonprofit, you need diverse revenue streams. So you need earned income, like shows, or I don't know how to monetize videos. Actually, Kellen Quinn, my son, is now monetized on his videos, so everybody go watch. So you want the, the fees for services, you need grants, corporate sponsorships is a nut that I'm still trying to crack to get above a certain amount. A lot of private donors and Circus Harmony, we're really small. People say they operate on a shoelace, we operate on the egglet, the little plastic chip. We were just given a grant from Cirque du Soleil before they went bankrupt. So. Although when they pay off their creditors, we're on that list. I don't know if we'll ever get it, but it's nice we got the grant. And I wanted to know what it truly takes to run a social circus. I think you have to have a heart for people in a different way. All teachers have to have heart. You're a good teacher. You really care about your students. But this is this is deeper and this is where you have to care about what's happening to them, not just the hour or the hour and a half that you're working with them, but beyond, and also what you are doing in that community. And I also wanted to introduce you to Jessica's circus dog, Maple. And we actually had a really, really interesting conversation about animals in circus. And in the past, I've heard a lot about how circus supports animal cruelty, but especially after talking with Jessica and hearing about the caring relationships between circus performers and the animals that they work with, I feel like these circus performers have a lot to say on the matter and I really want to talk about it. So please comment down below and let me know if this is a topic that interests you. And if you are a circus performer who works with animals, I'd really like to talk to you. So please definitely hit me up. <laughs> Anyways, here's Miss Maple, Circus Harmony's really cute mascot. Do you have to do awkward moment where we move the computer to the floor? <laughs> That's Maple. Oh, hi! Maple, oh, hi. shelter in place. Shelter in place. Shelter in place, go home. Shelter in place, go home. <laughs> Maple will now attempt to jump through a hoop. Up, bait, fire. Wait, you gotta wait. Okay, hop, take the hoop. Hop, wait! Maple, hop. Says, whoa, Maple. All right, good girl. Maple, go home. But her favorite trick, it seriously is her favorite trick, is we have Circus Harmony's Defy Gravity Coffee. It supports our Flying Children's Scholarship Fund, so it gives you a lift, helps the child store our own one cup. She likes to bring me my coffee. No, don't take it to your house. Bring me the coffee. Thank you. Get your Defy Gravity Coffee. Circus That's amazing. You got another trick, too. But really, I can't put the coffee down, or she'll pick it up. <laughs> Thank you for the coffee. <laughs> Make sure to give this video a like if you liked it and please subscribe and ring that bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye!